Audubana Odd Tales is a story about stories, in which all of the tales explored in Audubana Odd Tales have profound meanings and provide commentary on the interpretation of stories and the effects that they can have on individuals. This analysis thought piece video will cover the main plot points of Audubana Odd Tales, so anyone watching this video who has not read the visual novel will be able to grasp the ideas and themes of Audubana Odd Tales. However, on the flip side, this will also spoil key events and mysteries behind the plot, so this is your warning for spoilers. If you are interested in Audubana Odd Tales, you can check out my spoilerless review of the visual novel. I gave it a 5 out of 5. It's that great for such a short story. I have a link to the review in the description below, as well as a link to the game available on Steam. And so, let's begin. Welcome to the August Hail, and I want to help you find something great to read and experience. Let's talk about the power of stories in Audubana Odd Tales. In our first tale, Hanasaka Jisan, we are introduced to the world of Audubana Odd Tales, the rules defining the land of Audubana, and how Shirohime and Kurofude can operate in these illustration books. Shirohime has the power to create ink, while Kurofude has the ability to use that ink to restore stories. The two's duty is to find bookworms that have eaten the text and restore the tale back to its original form. And this action is justified and dutiful, to restore the story, especially if it leads to something good, like bringing back the grandfather's dog. However, the opposite can also happen. They can also restore parts of the story that lead to bad events happening, like the dog getting murdered by the jealous couple. Audubana Odd Tales explores a thought-provoking direction in this manipulation of stories. As Kurofude and Shirohime come to a point where the story stops because of the damaged text, Shirohime is left to wonder whether restoring the damaged plot point will lead to good or bad events, to which she voices her concern to Kurofude. If they think the tale will end in a tragedy, they can choose to end the story in the way that they want, ending on a deliberate positive ending. If you, the reader, choose certain decisions in Audubana Odd Tales, the story gets taken over by an Audubana spoiler, a being that embodies the twisted masses of human thoughts to manipulate and ruin stories. If you are not able to fix the story in Hanasaka Jisan, the tale ends up being destroyed by the Audubana spoiler, unable to be restored again. In an attempt to save it, Shiruhime uses her own blood to create ink for Kurofude to write a brand new ending for the old couple in Hanasaka Jisan, having them live in a never-ending happiness. If a story causes misery, perhaps it would be better off never ending. Would you consider this just? Prior to this point, before the tale gets destroyed, Shirohime wonders about this, asking Kurofude on whether or not they should change the story. Kurofude responds saying that this is a valid and justifiable action, if they were to alter the story. If you encounter a story you haven't read before, and it had bad slash tragic events happen to these characters, and if you had the power to change those stories, would you do it? As an example, let's take the tale of Romeo and Juliet. Juliet takes a potion that puts her in a death-like state, to which Romeo discovers her and commits suicide by drinking poison. And upon learning that Romeo has killed himself, she stabs herself with a dagger and joins him in death. Would you want to change that tragedy into a happy ending for Romeo and Juliet? The same concept is applied here in Hanasanka Jisan. Shirohime offers to change the story for the grandpa, and this results in three choices. Shirohime can make her own ending happen, Shirohime can ask what the old man wants the ending to be, or she can see out the original story. And we are put into the same perspective as Shirohime here. She does not know how the story ends, but they have a duty to fix it. While Shirohime wonders about her decision, in a rare moment of expression, Kurofude voices his concern about changing the story. Kurofude expresses his duty to finish the story, as if he was the author, he would want his story to be fully told. Fairy tales are records of the real lives led by the people within them. Likewise, we are but characters bound to another book. Given that, I find the idea of being eaten by some bookworm and having the life I led stolen from me most disturbing. How tragic a fate would that be? While he talks about bookworms in this particular quote, the same principle can be applied to anyone changing the story. How would you feel if someone took your autobiography and then rewrote parts of it to suit their beliefs? 
Kurufude is acting out a dutiful obligation here, but he is also saying that Shiruhime should act upon her feelings and alter the story to how she wants. Kurufude is letting Shiruhime drive the plot and will follow her, no matter what decisions she decides to take. Alternatively, Kurufude is allowing us, the reader, to choose how the story will end up, whether we change the tale or let the tale run its course, no matter how it decides to end up. I do things because I think that they should be done. Likewise, you're allowed to do things because you want to do them. The first tale of Audubon Odd Tales does an excellent job designing the rules behind this story restoration narrative while also allowing creative freedom. It also excellently uses the visual novel format to integrate this narrative into gameplay, allowing the player to make the choices through the lens of Shirohime. Truly a thought-provoking visual novel in its beginning chapter. Stories have the power to free people's minds. To interact with a story is to live another's life within one's imagination. While a story can be expressed in its original format and can be told with very clear-cut meaning, a story can be shaped and interpreted in many different ways by different people with varying thoughts. The second tale of Adabana Odd Tales takes us to the story of Urashima Taro. The story begins with Urashima Taro rescuing a turtle being flipped over on the beachside. As thanks, the turtle offers him a reward and takes him to the Dragon Palace at the bottom of the sea. There inside the Dragon Palace, he meets Otohime and spends several days with the princess. After Urashima Taro leaves the Dragon Palace, he discovers that he has been gone for at least a hundred years. Struck by grief, he opens the forbidden box that was given to him by the princess and the box transforms him into an old man. It's a tale that ends very unfortunately, almost disappointedly. Meanwhile, compared to Hanasaka Jisan, where despite the horrible things that happen, the tale ends happily for the couple. In Urashima Taro, however, there's no good ending for all parties here. As Shirohime and Kurofude go through the illustration book of Urashima Taro, they are introduced to Otohime, the ruler of the Dragon Palace under the sea. Otohime is their guide in this illustration book and she invites them to stay with her alongside Urashima Taro. The both of them agree, but they soon find out that the story is taking longer than expected to finish. It is then revealed that the reason why the story's events appear to repeat is that the story has been tampered with by an Adabana spoiler. The story was changed by the one who doesn't want this story to end. The one that wants to make Urashima Taro stay. Otohime. Otohime did not want to accept the ending in which Urashima Taro left her. She is troubled by the thought that her time spent with Urashima Taro will eventually end. So she became an Adabana spoiler in order to change the story so that he would stay with her forever. Adabana spoilers are the reflection of people's impulsive desire in a story. An Adabana spoiler's alteration to a story could be equally as valid as Shirohime and Kurofude's editing of the story. Otohime yielded herself to the Adabana spoiler in order to change her story. Otohime is aware of her original tale's ending on how Urashima Taro ultimately ends up leaving her, and she is resigned to that fact. Stories are faded. They always reach the same place. That is how they work. However, on the contrary, this story isn't finished yet. In the resolution of this chapter, Shirohime completes the tale of Urashima Taro and we are shown the conclusion of this story. When Urashima Taro opens the box, he becomes a crane. Otohime then reverts back into a turtle and the two of them reunite on a mountain together. It's an utterly ludicrous happy ending, but this way, everyone is content with its ending. Throughout history, there are many different interpretations of Urashima Taro, each varying in details. Stories change over time as people's thoughts influence them. While the plot structure of Urashima Taro remains the same, the details that people change within the story make each version of Urashima Taro unique. The version in which Urashima Taro turns into a crane and reunites with Otohime is a valid existing variation. So this incomplete illustration book has accepted this as its ending. Shirohime and Kurofude are the ones that are fixing and restoring these tales. But the characters in these stories also have the ability to change them to their desires. And if they have their own thoughts and emotions on these stories, why can't we? If we have a story whose ending is up to interpretation or is incomplete, doesn't it fall on us as readers to discern our own thoughts and interpretation of the story? We often do this through lore analysis, theory crafting, story discussions, and even Twitter threads. 
It's honestly very exciting to predict where the story can go, to discover new unique perspectives, and even to write our own unique endings, even if they're as ludicrously happy as this version of Urushima Taro. As we enter the latter half of the visual novel, Audubon Odd Tales starts to blur the events of the fairy tale stories with scenes that Shirohime sees. In the tale of Uriko Hime to Amanojaku, we are told the story of Uriko Hime in which she is being suddenly given a marriage proposal to the daimyo. However, in a tragic turn of events, Uriko Hime ends up being killed by an Amanojaku, a demon-like creature. It's here where Audubon Odd Tales takes some creative freedom from the tale. Here we are shown in a twist of events that Uriko Hime deliberately allowed herself to be killed in order to avoid the fate of entering a forced marriage. This forced marriage plot in Uruko Hime to Amanojaku echoes the conversation that the girl in the memories has with her sister. The girl also has a very similar instance in which she was presented with a forced marriage proposal, to which the sister adamantly protests. The girl responds dejectively, almost as if she has resigned herself to the future laid out for her. This sequence ends with the girl suddenly spotting a bird flying off in the distance. Where did the bird fly off to? It must be someplace so far away, a human could never reach it. Audubonna Odd Tales' version of Uriko Hime to Amanojaku ends very bittersweetly, as Uriko Hime changes her initial thoughts about the marriage proposal because of Shiruhime's intervention. Similarly, we are shown that the girl in the memories accepts her forced marriage proposal in an attempt to satisfy all parties, choosing the option that would make everyone happy, albeit at the risk of her own happiness. This third tale presents a story in which the character's desires and motivations don't line up with the reader's own personal values. But by reading these types of stories, the reader can explore, experience, and understand those unique perspectives. To be that character who can follow that journey and have that mindset, in which one cannot have for themselves. For example, a lot of us growing up as children had a desire to go on a grand adventure, to be the hero that slays the dragon, or to be the prince that saves the princess. However, as we are grounded in reality and as we grow up, we realize that we cannot hope to become those figures in these non-existent fantastic worlds. So in order to fulfill that desire, this is why we escape to those tales and stories. To have a taste of what it feels like to become those characters we adore, love, and strive to be. It's why some people love characters that are the complete opposite of themselves. It's so they can follow that ideal. Even Kurofude's voice actor has admitted to this in an interview. Uriko Hime is the splitting image of the girl's sister. Uriko Hime desires the freedom she was given before the forced marriage proposal, and we, the reader, don't know this initially. But as the tale builds to its climax, Shirohime's investigation reveals Uriko Hime's motivation and reason behind her actions in the story. As Adabana Odd Tales closes out this particular tale, Shirohime understands Uriko Hime's perspective, and even after Shirohime rewrites the story, she wonders whether or not it was the right thing to do. And it's really up to interpretation to the reader, as it falls into a gray area not having a clear right answer. At the end of the day, Adabana Odd Tales' version of Uriko Hime to Amano Jaku illustrates how a reader's thoughts and feelings can be affected by the characters and their stories, and in a special case for Shirohime, vice versa. I just want to keep weaving at my loom. I wish I could trade places with somebody else. I want to be free. I want to travel to the far reaches of the world. I just want to dictate my own fate. If Uriko Hime to Amano Jaku showed the perspective on how characters can influence the readers, the tale of Momotaro goes even farther to blur those lines between fiction and reality, as we are shown how an individual can project his or her own thoughts, feelings, and ideas into stories and characters. How the tale of Momotaro goes is that the main character, Momotaro, grows up and leaves on a journey to fight a band of Oni who are tormenting over the land. Along with his animal friends he befriends along the way, he travels to the island where the Oni dwells and defeats them. In Audubon Odd Tales' version of the story, however, Momotaro travels to the island to which he is then overpowered by the Oni and tragically dies. But you might be thinking, wait, that can't be it. Is that how the story goes? That's not the tale of how Momotaro ends. So then why did Audubon Odd Tales' version of Momotaro end up like this? Simply put, it's because Shirohime willed it to happen. 
but not in the way that you think. In the previous tales, Shirohime had manipulated the stories within the illustration books. However, in the tale of Momotaro, Shirohime didn't change the story in the land of Autobana, but rather in the real world itself. It is here in this last chapter that it is revealed that the land of Anabana is a fabricated world created by the girl in the memories, otherwise known as Shirohime's real life counterpart. The land of Anabana is a dreamlike storybook collection of the illustration books that she has read and had associated people close to her with the characters in the books. Momotaro didn't die in the tale to begin with. But because she had linked her late betrothed to the character of Momotaro, the character became a reflection of that real life event in Shirohime's mind. Her late husband dying to illness, to the Momotaro dying to the Oni, a personification of death. This final tale reaffirms the connection between fiction and reality. Shirohime associates Momotaro with her dead husband because both share similar traits. Shown in a prior flashback, the man speaks with a steadfast attitude. Straight, fast, and honest, the betrothed man speaks of Shirohime and the man's situation. A forced marriage for the sake of their families. As they talk, the man calmly reassures Shirohime as the both of them have very similar feelings towards the engagement. However, it's important to note that those people aren't those storybook characters and vice versa. But the traits and characteristics can bear resemblances to each other. I think it's hard to describe these resemblances because I think readers understand that crucial fact. Storybook characters aren't people in reality. But what about the authors of these books? The individuals creating these stories? Where do they get their inspiration from? Let's take a perspective from the author's side. Stories have the power to free people's minds. To interact with a story is to live another's life within one's imagination. Stories can bring out the deepest parts of one's mind, things that would normally never be seen. This is quoted from Kurafude at the start of this journey back in the first tale. The author, by writing a story, is inherently expressing his or her inner thoughts through his stories. An author can use his own experiences, beliefs, and emotions to create the story that the author wants to convey. Here, we can consider Shirohime as the writer of Adabana Odd Tales' version of Momotaro. In her mind, she used the death of her late husband to lay the groundwork for the tale, ultimately leading up to Momotaro's death. It's unfortunate, but it shows how strongly Shirohime had associated both individuals together, so much so that her knowledge of the tale ended up being changed subconsciously. I believe that all writers can create stories, but no two stories can be exactly the same. Each writer has their own experiences, thoughts, and beliefs that they infuse into their writing. A writer can take any story's characters or plot and change it the way that they want to. It's through this notion that I believe that each writer is unique, whether it's writing a different ending, creating a different interpretation, or even creating their own story. Audubana Odd Tales is a story about stories. Each of its tales can be used to explore and provide commentary on the interpretation of stories and the effects that they can have on readers. Hanasaka Jisan provides the groundwork for how we can have creative freedom in these tales. Urashima Taro discusses the endless possibilities of a singular tale. Uriko Hime to Amanujaku shows us the influence stories can have on us. And the tale of Momotaro demonstrates how we can shape our own stories. And as a whole, Adabana Odd Tales shows us the power of stories. As we accompany Shirohime on her journey, Shirohime learns lessons and morals from each of the tales in the land of Audubonna. Audubonna Odd Tales takes its name from the Audubonna flower. It's a flower that blooms and withers without ever bearing fruit. The same applies to these tales in the land of Audubonna. These stories may remain as stories, momentous and fleeting, but the experiences we gain out of these tales remain everlasting. If you made it to the end of this video, I want to thank you for staying to hear my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this think piece. This piece was a desire to talk more about the intimate themes and ideas of Audubonna Odd Tales that would have covered spoilers. I like to keep reviews spoilerless as much as possible and the content here would not have suited that. Let me know if you like more of these videos. 
I can't guarantee more stuff like this though. I just kind of started writing for the review and before I knew it, an enormous part of it ended up becoming the script for this video. I really encourage you to check out Audubon Odd Tales for yourself as there's even more to this visual novel than what I've talked about here. I left a link to my review of it as well as a link to the game in the description down below. Subscribe if you liked the video and want to see more. Check back every week for new content. For more of my thoughts and the most up-to-date news on videos, you can find me on Twitter at the August Hale. Check out some of my other anime visual novel reviews on my channel playlist. Links are in the description down below. That's it for today. I'll see you all next time.